The first window that opens in the wizard allows you to disable the wizard on startup, close the wizard, or continue. I'll click next to continue. In this window you must enter the admin password to continue. The default admin password is 1111. To enter that, click the admin password field. Click the keys on the virtual keyboard for 1111 and then click enter. In this window you can also change the default admin password to something different which we highly recommend to improve the security of your surveillance system. To change the password, click the box for new admin password to check it and then enter the new password in the new password and confirm fields. We'll do that now. Check the box. Click the new password field. Click in the new password on the virtual keyboard. Then click enter. Do the same for the confirm field. When finished, click the next button to continue. Here you can set the time for your recorder. Since all recorded video is time stamped, it is extremely important that the time be set correctly in case video evidence from your surveillance system is needed. To set the time, first open the time zone drop down list and then select your time zone. You can also select GMT if you prefer. Next, click the date format field and then click the format you prefer from the drop down list. If you need to change the system date, click the system date field and then click the current date in the calendar. To change the system time, click the time shown and then use the up and down arrows for each field to change the values. Click the next button at the bottom of the window to confirm your settings and continue. This screen allows you to set up your recorder's network settings. The settings in your NVR that allow it to communicate across the LAN. Initially, your NVR is configured to use a feature that exists in most LANs called DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. This feature enables the NVR to acquire its network settings automatically. The settings you see here for the IPv4 address, subnet mask, and default gateway were acquired using DHCP, and these settings are compatible with the LAN the NVR is connected to. One drawback of using DHCP is that the IPv4 address, commonly referred to as IP address, may change when a recorder is rebooted. This is the dynamic aspect of DHCP. It is preferable for convenience when connecting to the NVR from across a LAN that the IP address of your NVR remain constant. This is called static IP address. So to use this menu, first click the NIC, that is Network Interface Card, Type Field, and select the option that matches your LAN settings. If unsure about what to select, choose the Self-Adaptive option. Next, to set the static IP address in your NVR, Click the box to uncheck the Enable DHCP option. At this time, you can either choose to use the settings for the IPv4 address, subnet mask, and default gateway that were provided through DHCP, or enter your own settings. You can enter your own settings by simply clicking the field and then using the virtual keyboard to enter the setting. Note that these settings must be compatible with your LAN and the devices that share it. Consult with your network administrator for recommended settings if necessary. Lastly, you can enter both a preferred and alternate DNS domain name server IP address in the fields provided. These entries are optional. When finished, click the next button at the bottom of the window to save your settings and continue. In this screen, the status of the HDD hard disk drives installed in your NVR and those attached to it are listed. If the internal HDDs were pre-installed, there is nothing you need to do here. HDDs that were installed later and an eSATA disk drive attached to the eSATA port on the back of your NVR need to be initialized by the NVR before they can be used. Initialization does erase all data on the disk. To initialize the device, check the box for the device in the list, then click the INIT button and wait for the initialization to complete. Disk initialization could take several minutes. When finished, click Next to continue. In the next window, the wizard will search the LAN to find compatible cameras to add to your system. With the ALI NVR5016P, you can monitor up to 16 IP cameras. 
including those attached to the power over Ethernet ports on the back of the NVR, plus compatible cameras the NVR can connect to on the LAN. With the ALI NVR 5032P, you can monitor up to 32 IP cameras total, with up to 16 attached to the power over Ethernet ports on the back of the NVR, plus up to 16 more from the LAN the NVR is attached to. You can click search to rescan the network the NVR is connected to to find additional cameras. Check the select boxes for the cameras you want to add, then click the Add button. Click Next to continue. On this screen you can configure all cameras to begin recording video either continuously or when motion is detected. To bypass this option, click Exit. The wizard will close. The recording mode of individual cameras can be configured using the system menus. To use one of these recording options, click either Continuous or Motion Detection, click Yes in the pop-up window, and then click the OK button to close the wizard. Additional recording settings, such as establishing a recording schedule, selecting what part of the field of view to sense for motion, blocking areas of the video image for privacy considerations, configuring channel resolution and frame rate, and other options including placing labels on the video image, adding additional cameras installed on the LAN to your NVR, and other settings can be configured in the NVR menu system. Refer to the user manual for your NVR or other videos for more information.